Uh, the Figs, the Zambonis, and Big Fat Combo will be playing Cafe 9 Saturday, April 18th, 2020. Uh, doors are 8.30 p.m., show is 9 p.m., and tickets are $12. This is Cafe 9 in New Haven, Connecticut, age 21 plus only. You can get tickets online ahead of time. There will be a link down below in the description for where you can get tickets if you're interested. Hey, everybody, this is your host, Vinyl Man Jeb of the Jeb and Green cast. Joined with Tyler today and Dave Schneider of Hello. the Zambonis and the Levies. Welcome, Dave. What's happening? What's going on? Uh, so you guys Great have a big show at CAF 9 in New Haven, Connecticut. So I thought I'd get you guys on since Peter Donnelly mentioned in the last episode that Tyler and I did together that you guys were doing a show with the Big Fat Combo. And- I do, but I, w- I have a question for you. You All say right. CAF 9. You know it's CAFE 9. Oh, okay. It's CAFE 9. All right. I apologize. Yeah. I, d- I thought you were speaking. From, maybe you're from Belgium where you, they <laughs> say it differently, but I- I'm going to add the all right, it's cafe. I'm going to throw in cafe. Cafe, all right. That's just sometimes our brains get a little mixed up. There we go. When we're planning these episodes, so. Perfect. <laughs> it's um, just podcaster brain. It happens all the time. I love it. I just <laughs> I heard the Pete Donnelly. I heard the Pete Donnelly interview, and I heard Calf Nine, and I thought maybe I'm old, and nah. you guys are younger, and you want to just cut out the balls. <laughs> the balls are really uncool these days. There we go. Yeah, we just we just like to we just love to rebel. So, <laughs> so I'm gonna go a little. I'm gonna try to not be an old guy. I'm gonna cut out the A too. So we're playing a nine. All right, cool, perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm nine. gonna go. I'm gonna go one step beyond. K nine. There we go. Which one? The which one? K nine. K nine. Yeah. There's no. Uh, there's Hold no. Hold on, my freaking you know. phone. Part. <laughs> oh, oh, I, I like it. Perfect. So now they're only they're only doing dog shows, the canine. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> there you go. Canine. So it's exciting that you guys are playing April nineteenth, coming to around the area. I'll I'll should be able to see you guys. Uh, hopefully, I'm only twenty though, so hopefully I'll be able to kind of maybe get a hold of Pete and see if I can come see Soundcheck or something, or just come to meet you guys. But it'd be an amazing opportunity. But you guys are also with the Big Fat Combo, correct? Yeah, April eighteenth, Big Fat Combo, Zambonis, and the Figs. All right, it's April and, uh, right, it's perfect. the we're on the we're not, it's and as you add bands on the bill you make much less money ah. so this is this is all from the heart this, oh, this, this is, is awesome. a bad financial decision to put three <laughs> three bands at nine there we go <laughs> um but it, it should be really i mean I, it, it's not should be it will be an awesome night and i could uh you know I've I've seen you guys. I I sort of look like both of you, and uh, I could let you borrow my ID if you can be fifty. All right, <laughs> all right, I'm down. I just go. Well, I mean, I do. I do feel like a fifty year old in a twenty three year old's body. So there you go. I, I there's nothing wrong with that. You're ahead of the you're ahead of the curve. <laughs> all right, or you're, you're just curved. One of the two. But regardless, uh, you know what you should do. I got a great plan. All right. Pick up. I'll, I'll I'll work it out with you. I'll give you money. All you right. Pick up pizza from either Cali's or Peppy's, and you just walk in like you're delivering the pizza. It's not a bad idea. So <laughs> it's not a bad idea. It's a no. It's a great. That's idea. a great idea. Believe yeah. me, it, it's a great idea, and there's no way it will fail. There's no way. I mean, I got a backup. You, I mean, you, get a, 20, you so guys get a free pizza out of it. Yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Well, he's giving me the money, so it wouldn't be free, Tyler. It'd be his money. Uh, <laughs> oh. I, I, uh, we do get you, you. can get a pizza out of uh, Paul and Cafe Nine, but I prefer not to get. I, I cherish Cafe Nine and the owner Paul. He's a, uh, he's done so much for for everything around here. Just sticking with it with that place, and it's, it's a just, great area too. It's I a hard know. business. Yeah, and it's cool that they kind of yeah kind of have that that rock feel still in the part of it because I'm, I'm friends with rick del santo and a few of the people like at Re- replay records that have always told me about uh cafe nine there we go <laughs> and i'm just excited to to no to jeb to see a nine yeah exactly <laughs> all right yeah. tyler if you want to hit with the first question <laughs> yeah, I'll they're, they're for you. all right oh i'll go ahead go ahead okay so i was going to ask you know who your inspirations are which i'm still going to ask of of course, but I do also want to, you know, start off from where you got started as a musician. Yeah. Uh, I I got in really late. I uh, um, I started making. I I picked up the guitar in college, hmm. and uh, and then uh, 
I sort of just started figuring things out, sweet chain and things like that. But I never learned a choice properly how to play. So I ended up just writing my own songs because I didn't know how to do anything else. And then I would do some open mics and, uh, and because I don't know why I could just make up songs a lot on the fly. So that became sort of my thing. And then I ended up, uh, doing that with some bands I would fill in for this band, those Melvins. And these oh, two wow. guys ran up to me and said, Hey man, who, who wrote that song about Jonathan Richmond? I said, Oh, I just made it up. They're like, yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, these guys like Jonathan Richmond, I liked Jonathan Richmond and we became friends and we started the Zambonis a couple of years later. <laughs> nice. That's incredible. And those so guys, who... Peter and Tarkin Peters from the Philistines Jr. So who are some of your inspirations as a, as a musician? Oh, man. Uh, I really, I'm a sponge, but I mean, there's too many to mention. I can, Jonathan Richman, Television, Ramones, Talking Heads, okay. Leonard Cohen. There, there's there's, there's tons. Kinks. Yeah. So it's it's really, the great part of the Zambonis and even the Levies, you know, both of these bands, the Levies are my other band with Adam from Guster, and we only write songs about being Jewish. <laughs> now, which we'll get into not, in a little bit. Yeah, they're, they're not um, religious songs at all. They're just fun. Yeah, so like a bowling for soup know. kind of vibe, but that side of it. I, I was listening to. Uh, we'll get further in on the questions. Well, more like more like a bowling for matzo ball soup. Yeah, but, uh, perfect. <laughs> there we go. That's perfect. Right. <laughs> I love that. But but the point is, since these bands are possibly seen as novelty joke, novelty bands or whatever joke bands. We can play any kind of music we want, and we don't have to give a shit. That's awesome. Can I say shit? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Um, so, so that's the joy of this. So if I want to make up a song that sounds like Hank Williams or that is influenced by Johnny Cash or the Dead Kennedys or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We don't have to take ourselves seriously. So it really awesome. kind of opens up all these things for all these inspirational bands and artists. Honestly, I wish that was a, a mentality that more, you yeah, know, get to be musicians and artists would have these days. You know, we can that we can do whatever we want. We don't have to abide by the rules. I mean, yeah. fuck the rules. We don't need the rules, <laughs> honestly. So, yeah, you know, just yeah. just play what you want, write what you want. If it sounds like yeah. someone's song, then you know it's okay. It's not like you directly stole from that song, so. Why not, yeah. you know? Yeah, and I've yeah. always been inspired by Bowling for yeah. Soup myself, and now finding out about the I Zambonis mean, is amazing. like I said, if, uh, if... Thanks, but if I was Radiohead, you know, <laughs> then you're you're sort of... I understand. Like, you have yeah. a sound, and we can't put this song on there that sounds like, you know, whatever, uh, Primus or whatever it may be. But, you know, again, having that joke band label uh we don't have to worry about anything which is amazing which leads me into my next question you guys played with a uh, real big fish and bowling for soup how was that show ah uh, well it was great let me just start off and say that it was great their fans are amazing and everything was great the the, the small problem with that show was um uh the band that was supposed to be on that bill was nerf herder oh um Ooh, yeah nerf herder yeah and they backed out, so uh, it was great. Mark from uh, Manic Productions called and said, "Listen, I got a perfect gig for you guys. You guys will kill it." Uh, and uh, blah blah blah. So we go on. The problem was we had, you know, he said, "What do you want, you know, for a rider?" I, I don't know if you guys know what a rider is, but it's everything the band gets backstage. You know, hummus, oh, okay. local beer, M and M's, whatever, whatever you want, fresh fruit. So I said, oh, don't worry about it. He said, well, I got to give you something. You guys, you know, you're, you're playing in front of 1,500 people. You should get what you want. I said, don't worry about it, Mark. Just get us some beer and some water and some some hummus or something. So it turns out we had Nerf. They never did it. And they never changed it. So we had Nerf Herder's um, Rider, which was two bottles of Jameson. Oh. That, that, that's whiskey, and I don't drink whiskey. Oh. But I yeah. did that night. <laughs> and so did the rest of the band. And I don't quite remember the show that much. Ah, so I see. The, answer, the answer is, it was a good night. 
There you go. Perfect. <laughs> but uh, it, it was it was old school rock and roll for us. We we don't really dr- we're not like a hard drinking band, but since we got Nerf Herders Jameson whiskey, why not? One of us, I won't mention it. One of us was seriously uh, <laughs> in the tank. That's rock and roll, though. <laughs> well, I guess so, yeah. I guess so. I, I have a different problem. I drank some whiskey, but I also I ate way too much hummus before the show, too. Ah. So it was a combo. Yeah, you, you're better off being down uh, in front of the stage far away from me that night. <laughs> so it was great. That, and true. they were also awesome, awesome guys. Everybody was really nice and uh, they had a do- the uh, one of the guys had had his dog with him, and I love dogs. That's that's oh, my cool. thing. <laughs> yeah. So that's that question. What's up next? All right. What's next uh, is uh, what age did you become a huge fan of hockey? Since I see the Zamboni's name is based on the the, the ice rink machine, right? Yeah, uh, I would say probably around. Um, let's see, sixty. So probably around seven and eight, my father used to, I'm from Trumbull, Connecticut. And oh, okay. He used to get, me and my two brothers would get in the, the Lincoln Continental, and my father would drive us up to New Haven Coliseum to see the New Haven Nighthawks. And uh, I can still taste those asbestos-flavored French fries to this day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah. I never knew it had a flavor until I went there. But, um. And that, that's that's where I was completely exposed to hockey and and uh, the seediness and beauty of the game. So it's great. All right, cool. So next question. So what is your what's your song process like? Your songwriting process and um, what are what are some of your favorite songs you've written for both bands? My song process is I start the day with a bagel, cream cheese, and chives. No. <laughs> Everything is based around food for me, but uh, no, I mean, uh, you know, it's weird. Songs, songs are odd. I'm sure everybody has their different methods, but um, some just fall out of the air and just happen, and some are, you know, you, like for example, last weekend, Saturday night, this Zamboni driver filled in. I don't know if you guys heard that story about no. the Zamboni driver, the backup goalie that filled in for the hurricanes and ended up winning first star he was like oh, he wow. had a kidney transplant so that night i was like oh my god i gotta write a song about this it was like 11 o'clock and then i woke up at 2 2 a.m and started coming up with ideas and i called my friend tim when i woke up and uh tim's in the zambonis and uh i said tim we got to write and record and release a song in the next eight hours and uh and he's like all right so he came from brooklyn we got breakfast and from 12 p 12 yeah 12 noon to 6 p.m we finished we wrote and recorded and released the song and uh it's been amazing and that's about this goalie it's called ebug emergency backup goalie and it's literally oh, wow. like, it's it's been crazy for the last week it's it's we've gained like 150 likes on facebook and the song's been downloaded a bunch and we'll put a link down in the description for you too so more people can listen to it definitely that's awesome yeah it's been crazy so so you can either fall out of the sky you pick up a guitar and you just start <laughs> riffing around and then um, or you just get inspired by a story and and that's what happens i call it writing songs by assignment and sometimes i'm i'm really good at that and so is my 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 band the band is great not my band I'm sorry I said that guys it's all good right. but uh yeah that we do that well yeah Pete Donnelly had a Sweet. similar writing process too it's cool that you guys are playing together because Pete was saying sometimes he just writes it just kind of just comes and sometimes not his story sometimes so it's like really cool to see that it's like another inspiration coming from back and forth that's awesome yeah, I love it it's my it is really my um, I can do it alone, but I, I love just, you know, if the, if the Zambonis are rehearsing or Adam and, and I are just sitting there with two guitars, that, that to me, you know, besides having a, a child or, or a Sally's pizza. Yeah. Uh, I need to get there. I need to get there. <laughs> it, it's kind of the greatest thing in the world. I, I don't know how to do magic. I don't do card mm-hmm. tricks and I don't surf. I wish I could surf a hundred foot wave, but 
the idea of something just sort of creating itself in this weird little mystified way is just, and then it's just a melodic fun song and that's or awesome. it's move your heart or something. That's, that's, <laughs> that's my favorite thing in the world. All right. So do you have like a, a favorite song out of all the stuff you've written or is that like one of the ones that, that one of the newest ones kind of really close to heart with that? No, uh, you know, that's hard. I, I have definitely, there's a song called hockey on the moon by the Zambonis, which I, I love very much. And thank God it's back in the set and we, we all really love playing it. It's uh, the songs that are great for me are not, um, the typical hockey songs, which we try not to ever write, to be hmm, honest with yeah. you. We've never written, you know, puck you or, you know, uh, <laughs> like the idea. The you idea know, I'm sensing a pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. But seriously, I, we could, this could be, uh, if we cross the line in the wrong way, the worst band ever. And, and yeah. we really try it's to tough. avoid that. Yeah, it, it is tough. So, we don't want to be a bunch of idiots. We don't want to be just a bunch of dudes, you know, holding hockey sticks. Well, we want to gracefully skate around the idea of hockey music, you know. So getting back to it, Hockey on the Moon is about the race to the moon, the Cold War, Ooh. and the 1980 Olympics. And it sounds like a, a wishing by the Flock of Seagulls was sort oh, of involved cool. with. Yeah, so that's that's definitely one of my favorite songs. Um, whirlwind is about is is really cool because it doesn't mention hockey, but it's it's just simple and that's one of the ones that fell out of the sky for me. It's just me and a guitar and it's about an enforcer that has a journey of falling down alcohol drugs and then comes back up. So I don't know, head in the game. There's there's plenty of them. There's a a Levy song called Kugel that I I, I love. It's about my mother and her cooking how it failed but uh yeah there's a it's like the jonathan richmond thing it, it, you know it, some of the songs don't sound like they should be good but in the end they're they're very touching so that's my favorite a I smile and a that. cry I admire that that is awesome <laughs> all right so how so how did the levies get started um zambonis were on tour with guster who are a great band and have become dear friends of mine and uh, yeah, love Guster. I love them too. And they're they're also amazing human beings. All four of them, five of them. Joe Joe was in the band too, but he left. And they're just uh, they're just great. So we were on tour, and uh, I, I I sort of the Zambonis were in a minivan, and uh, those guys said, "Hey, why don't you come on the bus?" I'm like, "Okay." And I said, "Zambonis, all right, I'm going to go on the bus for one night. All right, no problem." So Adam says to me on the bus, want to write some songs about being Jewish? I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> and uh, I thought he was screwing around, but we went in the back of the bus and we wrote three songs in an hour. And uh, and then the next day, he sent them to his manager, Dalton. And then the next day, Dalton said, hey, Warner Brothers wants to release the, the record. Wow. So, yeah. Really? So wow. if you write hot... <laughs> If you write hockey songs for 20 years or 30 years, it's great. But if you write three Jewish songs, you get a deal. <laughs> and you wrote, and you wrote three of these songs in in under an hour. Yeah, that's a yeah, there definitely. is no there wow. is no excuse for not writing a song at this at this point. If you're listening, no guys, get gets it right. <laughs> yeah. If you write yeah. a song, no matter how bad it may be, you might think it's bad, but someone else know. will love it. Yeah. No, no this, right. you'll never know what'll happen until you, you do. The key was the key was that when you think of a, a Jewish song, you think of yeah, da, 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 da. so the idea was to write <laughs> Jewish songs as if the Kinks or Elvis Costello or the Cars were writing these songs. So that that's what we went for. And it shows, and, uh, it shows. It's got that I love that uh one song that you guys do um that I was really big into and I shared it this morning on my Facebook. Uh how do you spell Hanukkah? It's one of the coolest. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, and the the recording kicks ass. Yeah, it's a I great agree. Piece. It sounds awesome. <laughs> we recorded, recorded that with my best buddy Peter Cadis, who who's done amazing stuff. All the all the national well, most of the national records, the first two Interpol records and so it 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 sounds really good. It's really good. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, Tyler, we'll yeah. wrap up with the final question. Uh, Tyler, you can ask the final one. <laughs> This is it, the final question. The final question, yeah. The final question. Is final what is question. <laughs> right. Final question. All right. So what is so what is next on the horizon for you in terms of future song releases and everything? Uh, well, we just put out a song and wrote it last week, so that's pretty fresh off the presses. All right, yeah. All right. You can go, you can go to zambonis.com. The link is there. Yeah, I haven't even. Below. It's uh, yeah, it's. It's not even up streaming yet because uh, it's it's been filled out, but it takes like a week to get it up. Yeah. Uh, this podcast will be up before it on uh, iTunes and everything. That's awesome. So I'll be able to hype it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's only on Bandcamp. That's the only you know. I just yeah, put I support it up there. Bandcamp. Yes. <laughs> it really is great. It really is amazing. Yeah. I, I I gotta give it credit, and um, and we have a new record that will be out in. September or October, and uh, right. it's got a ton of new songs, and uh, we're playing plenty of shows. Cafe Nine and then Troy, New York, with the Figs again oh, nice. the night before, and I think we're playing May. Yeah, we're doing a yeah we're doing a boat show in Bridgeport. Ooh, oh, sweet. That, that, yeah, yeah, that's kind of odd. It's at this uh, Harbor Point. It's the new. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty wild. They're sort of the first expansion of. They're trying to make. Bridgeport like Stanford or New York City. So they 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 built some beautiful stuff there. So yeah, it's like a, what's the word? Uh, le not leisure boat, but uh oh my god, I can't remember. Yeah, Crazy yeah. expensive boats. Uh, like a yacht. Uh, exotic. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, bigger than you know. They put yachts oh, on this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, luxury. That's the word I'm not, I'm not thinking of. But I just did luxury. It's a luxury boat show. It's crazy. Oh, all right. But I think it's, I think it's free. You just show up and uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be nutty. Well, sweet. I'll keep me posted because so, I'm in Connecticut. Tyler's in Philly, so we do this online. But I'm, I'm, I'm in CT, and I love Connecticut's music scene. So keep me, keep me updated. I'd love to come see you. Yeah, I will. Perfect. And we'll link and, it uh, down below please, for you guys. Please. Yeah, definitely. Instagram, yeah. the Zamboni. Perfect. The yeah, send me everything, Facebook, Dave. We'll put it all down below, and it'll be up on the iTunes description, too. So it'll be perfect. And if you're ever in Philly, definitely yeah, like definitely Tyler. swing by. Let me know. I'll see if I can uh, I can ho hook you up with Gritty. Oh, God. <laughs> Gritty, is, Gritty is beyond my hero. He's so good. Gritty Whoever's is, in that suit. Gritty is just – it's, it's, it's hard to describe the enigma known as, as Gritty. He's a he's a legend here in Philly, obviously. So, I was a supporter right away. You know, the the day it came out, everybody, you know, no one likes anything new. It takes a while, but I, I was like, this this is ballsy. And uh, yeah, and I, it I really was though, because nobody knew what to make of Gritty for like the first week. Like we were all at first, we were all like really confused and a little bit terrified, and then we just all collectively agreed, no, Gritty's the Gritty's the best. Just yeah. go with it. <laughs> But I, I I was fresh off the presses. I immediately wrote a holiday song about Gritty. That we released that. That's on Bandcamp too. Uh, That'll be in the description as well. Perfect. Yes. A I'm Gritty Christmas. Christmas. Perfect. All right. <laughs> I like that. Uh, but 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 it is amazing. I even contacted the guy that uh that 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 runs the marketing firm that created Gritty and just sent him a, <laughs> basically sent him a love note. Aww. <laughs> He's a I mean, cool just looking dude. <laughs> I mean, no, but Philly is known as a tough town. I yeah. Mean, yeah, no kidding. It, I've, I rode a bike, and you know what? It's a true story, so I can say it. All right, I perfect. got on a bike. All right. I got on a bike. At, we were playing a show at a Kyber Pass, this great place that used to be down there. It was us, Adam and his package, and the Moldy Peaches. And uh, those are two of my favorite bands ever. And some guy had a bike. A friend of ours had a bike. And I get on the bike, and I'm wearing, I'm wearing a Hartford Whalers jersey. And I ride about maybe eight yards. And some guy just yells, get off the bike, faggot. So I'm like, no. what kind of <laughs> – I know it's not right, but it's a true story. That's how tough Philly is. Oof. So for Gritty to make it through, every tough guy in Philly, those Eagles fans – In all fairness – it's it's unbelievable, and he's great. I love it. 
I love it. In all fairness, Gritty would definitely punch out a homophobe if he had if he had the chance. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got to give him Gritty is our that. defender. <laughs> <laughs> and the best part is, when he was sued by that homophobe, he would still win the case now too. Yeah, definitely. Exactly. Everybody yeah. Loves Gritty. <laughs> just, just, you know, guys, we'll wrap it up that there. Piece. That was that's awesome. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> Perfect ender. Well, thank you, Dave, for coming up. And, and Tyler, yeah, thanks thank for being you here, so man. much. Awesome to have you co-host all the time and, and being on. So it's glad to have all of us on. And Dave, you're going to be right up on iTunes right after this. It'll be the first episode right in line with the YouTube release. Finally got everything squared away up oh, on yeah. Anchor. So shout out to Anchor for hosting us.